This week, folks, we are heading into by far one of the most confusing, pivotal, yet exciting earnings we've seen in a very long time with tech giants doing massive layoffs, heading into this recessionary environment, really putting some fear in people's eyes. Yet on the other spectrum, I'm finding data that's kind of contradictive to this recession, right? Like there's some really good data. And I want to kind of break this down because obviously coming into this next week will dictate what the market's going to do and what happens to these tech stocks that have been rallying so damn much into the beginning of 2023. If that's a conversation you'd appreciate in return, just hit that like button, folks, because firstly, taking a look at the broader indices with like the S&P 500 index VOO, every time this thing sells off, it just rally backs to a new high in the beginning of the year. Keep in mind, obviously, we're still at lows. We're not back to all time highs anywhere near soon. Here, but man, what a hell of a start to the year. You look at the NASDAQ QQQ ETF, and this thing's up 10.7%. But all of this is going to hinge, I think, on what happens in the next week. And I want to kick this off by talking about the big advertising giants. These are the bellwethers to the recession, because obviously the first thing people cut in a recession is ad spend. We'll take a look at my YouTube ad revenue. We'll just take a look at some statistics. But firstly, when it comes to these layoffs, Google has cut 12 thousand employees let's talk about the ones and zeros what does that add up to when you take a look the average wage can be between 72,000 and 177,000 depending on your job placement there but let's take the median of 123,000 times that by the 12,000 employees they're laying off and that works out to being almost 1.5 billion dollars they're going to save this year and again that is the true sign for most people that hey these earnings might be pretty bad yet there's some really interesting data coming out of google trench so showing the actual search traffic for people wanting to run ads right like Google Ads I use them all the time yet when we look at the search traffic for that we're sitting at a damn near five-year high and we are wickedly higher than where we were during the March 2020 March you know just 2021 the whole pandemic period and when we look at the related queries we can see a lot of people are asking you know how do I become a Google Ads specialist so there's a huge amount of demand and a lot of search traffic around Google Ads I mean I wasn't expecting that so that's kind of weird and it's gonna be neat to see how that bakes in right but taking a look from my YouTube ad income it's pretty much in line with where it usually is you know when you follow your favorite youtubers you'll notice through kind of November December they are posting an insane amount of content and that's because during the holidays ad spend is at its all-time high you get vlog miss all the vloggers are posting every day even the finance influencers are like doubling tripling up their post and typically it falls off pretty dramatically in January and February and that's what I'm seeing about a 30% correction because typically my CPM which basically is what Google pays or what advertisers are willing to pay per thousand views. And right now for my niche in the finance space, that's about $17 per thousand views. I get around 50% of that. That's represented in the RPM. That's my take home pay per those thousand views. But typically this is around 20 to $23. So it is definitely down 20, 30%, right? But taking a look guys, Google is going to be posting earnings February 2nd, and I'm going to be on the edge of my seat to see what is going on with this company. So let's talk about Meta now. Meta by far, I think, is one of the cheapest value tech companies on the entire market. Whether you use, you know, Marketplace, a lot of people use, I still use Facebook, I run meme pages, you know, Instagram, WhatsApp, all of these platforms that basically like, what, one, two thirds of the entire world are basically using at this point. Meta's not going anywhere anytime soon, and I love my Oculus. I'm still using my VR four days a week. I'm getting ripped playing VR four days a week. It's kind of funny, my fiance is getting a little jealous because of the time I'm putting into that thing. But Meta lays off around 11,000 employees as its metaverse bet still is isn't paying off and I hope it starts to pay off I don't want it to go anywhere I love it too much but those 11,000 employees guys let's take that average salary again now this range is dramatic I mean we're talking about specialists making 280,000 a year yet you know they're saying that the meta salary ranges from that 71,000 up to that 280 so let's just start at the lower spectrum right let's just take the lowest possible spectrum 71,000 a year times 11,000 employees is almost 800 million so this company is saving anywhere from 800 million to perhaps 1.2 billion dollars from doing those layoffs yet just like Google in the search traffic here for Google Trends you know we're seeing meta ads Facebook ads ads, Instagram ads, they're actually heading toward their five-year high. And when we take a look at the related queries, just to see what people are searching, we can see business Facebook, Facebook meta business, meta suite. But what's really intriguing is the breakout for TikTok. I mean, TikTok is a huge competitor right now with YouTube, which is also going to be launching the first time they're going to be doing um, an ads program where you can get paid as a creator to post shorts. So YouTube, Google really trying to compete uh, with TikTok here, but you know, TikTok's just crushing it right now. So no surprise, it'll be neat to see how meta 
post for those earnings that are coming up February 1st. Now, putting that aside, let's talk about Amazon, the backbone of our economy. You're probably paying for Amazon Prime. You're probably ordering stuff here. I still am on you know a monthly basis, but let's just talk about the layoffs. 18,000 rolls. Now, Amazon doesn't pay their employees nearly as much on the median than Google and Facebook do, but let's just take the, the average here. We can see that it can be anywhere from 33,000 to 40, 49,000 a year, and that's Canada's numbers apparently. I don't know what the global Amazon salaries are, but let's just take a median of $40,000 a year. You're still talking about 720 million to you know a billion dollars again. Again, all these companies are looking to save a billion plus dollars by the looks of it, right? That seems to be falling in line very similarly across the board. Amazon's gonna be posting February 2nd, and honestly, outside of ad spend, I really don't know what the e-commerce sector is gonna look like. Very related to Shopify as well, right? And this one's a lot harder to search for trend traffic on, so I don't know, Amazon's up in the air to me. I'd love to know what you think about Amazon earnings that are coming up. And what's really intriguing is I feel like Elon Musk had his finger on the button for this already. You know, we're seeing their margins shrink. You know, last year in the middle of the stock market crash during, you know, June, 2022, they laid off 3.5% of their total workforce. So Elon kind of jumped the gun on this, which was pretty impressive, but they said they would reduce their workforce by 10% over that you know, toward the latter half of last year. And again, it's kind of intriguing because now in 2023, they're getting the most demand they've ever really seen across their Model Y and Tesla Model 3 since lowering their prices. And that's outpacing every other automaker by search traffic. So again, it's so hard to tell what's going on because we're seeing good data yet bad data at the same time. It kind of still getting that reminiscence that this could really be a soft landing. And Apple, another bellwether for the economy. I mean, if Apple ever posted bad numbers, say goodbye to the S&P 500, the largest company, the behemoth that Apple is at a $2.2 trillion market cap. This sucker is looking like there's some speculation. We're seeing this in news articles like Apple's Tim Cook is the Hall of Fame CEO who will avoid layoffs analysts predict and they you know they're coming up with their earnings february 2nd but they did just drop the new m2 pro and the m2 max these macbooks that i personally bought the m1 pro super expensive but i love this laptop and now i'm stuck in their ecosystem because if i ever get a new laptop i'm converted fully into apple products phones watches their laptops like you know and apple's got us by wrapped around their finger we're not going anywhere with this company so it'll be neat to see considering there is expected slowdowns they did cut chips i mean, I mean they announced they're they're going to cut back supply on their chip manufacturing from places like TSM. So that's kind of concerning from like what's going on with product sales. But every time I go to an Apple store, it's still super packed. So this earnings is going to be very, very insightful. Now, when it comes to TSM, they post monthly numbers. So I don't know what's going to go on with TSM. You know, I'm hoping it slows down. TSM was trading down today where most tech stocks were trading up. Honestly, I hope it comes down a lot more. If, if it comes down enough, I'll probably start buying it again. But for now, I'm just sitting on my hands because it rallied way too much. But look at that, man. Green across the board today. What a start to the year. And I want to pass the question off to you. I'd love to know what you guys think is going to happen. Do you think we're going to see a soft landing? Do you think that was the bottom of the market? You think we're heading into a detrimental recessionary period? It takes a lot of time for this stuff to play out. But man, oh man, I am going to be glued to the edge of my seat with these earnings coming up this week.